Shall we begin, sir? Sorry, your mic is on. Uh, sir, shall we begin, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. I am handing over the session to Shivani. Good evening, everyone. Quoting Nelson Mandela, the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in raising every time we fall. With great joy and immense pleasure, I extend my warm welcome to all dignitaries, guests and delegates present here for the Dr. Sudhi Raj Memorial free webinar series organized by Diksha Academy in association with Ayurveda College Coimbatore under the banner of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. In today's session, we'll be discussing about, about applied aspects of Shakha Marma by Dr. Vijayanath. Before starting the session, I would like to go through a few of the basic instructions to be followed throughout the session. For uninterpreted class sessions, use laptop with high-speed internet connection. Please make sure your microphone is on mute to have a disturbance free session. In case of any disruption, please check your internet connection firstly. And if the problem is with an R network connection, kindly raise the issue in the chat box. Filling your full name to be displayed is appreciated. Any questions can be raised posted in the chat box. Questions raised will be cleared at the end of the session. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Hita, Assistant Professor, Department of Shalya Tantra, Ayurveda College Coimbatore, to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Shivani. Good evening, one and all. On behalf of Ayurveda College Coimbatore and Diksha e-learning, it gives me an immense pleasure to extend a warm word of welcome to our speaker, Dr. Vijayanath, sir. As you all know, sir, we'll be detailing the applied aspects of Shaka Marma. Hope this discussion will be one among the best to look into our concepts in a new perspective. Let me proudly welcome all the delegates who have joined with us today. Welcome you all once again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Vijayanath V. Sir. Dr. Vijayanath V. Sir, hailing at Kerala, completed his UG at Bhaidaratnam Ayurveda College, Ullur, and PG at SDM Udupi in Rajana Sharira, and pursued PhD in Parul University, Gujarat. Currently, Sir is working as Assistant Professor at Government Ayurveda College, Triponi Tara. Sir has over 10 years of experience in teaching and has presented many national presentations. We are extremely obliged to have you here, Sir. Now, without any further ado, let me hand over the session to Dr. Vijayanath V. Sir to enlighten our minds with his knowledge. Over to you, Sir. Oh, uh... Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, uh, let me thank Kambatur Ayurveda College uh, and uh, Dr. Vishnu Devi for giving me an opportunity uh, to uh, give a lecture on this topic. And uh, this, uh, I know this webinar series is held in the memory of Dr. Sudhir Yatsar, who passed away a year ago. And uh, myself, being a humble uh, Ayurvedic doctor from Kerala. I believe that the uh, demise of Dr. Suviraj is a phenomenal loss for the Ayurvedic community of Kerala. And so we are, what you call, we are keeping his memories alive and the message of knowledge which he passed in his short lifetime to us, we are just, uh, what you call, spreading that uh, light of uh, knowledge uh, through this webinar series. So, I once again I appreciate and congratulate this humble endeavor for the part of the college. So I just start my presentation and uh, it is raining cats and dogs here right now. So raining very heavily. I hope I am audible, isn't it? Yes, sir, but there are some background noises, sir. Okay. Now is, is it more clear now? Yes, sir, it is clear, sir. Okay, okay. So, Thank you, sir. Uh, so, the my topic uh, that has been allotted to me is uh, applied aspects of uh, Shaka Marma. And uh, so, just uh, before uh, getting into the topic, I need to make some introductory remarks. As you all know, the Sharira can be viewed as a Sukhma Sharira and the Stula Sharira. And the Sukhma Sharira, as you all know, uh, has to be uh, understood with the Anumana Pramana. So Charagacharya, who is considered the master physician, has himself told about the Sukhma Sharira as Sharira 
പരമാണു ഭേദേന അപരിസംഖ്യം പൗതി അപരിസംഖ്യ മീൻസ് ഇന്യൂബറബിൾ പ്രത്യക്ഷ പ്രമാണം ഓക്കെ സോ വെൻ ഇറ്റ് കംസ് ടു ദി കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് മർമ്മ യു ഓൾ നോ ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ സ്കൂല ശരീര ദാറ്റ് കംസ് ഇൻ ടു പ്ലേസ് ബട്ട് വെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഗെറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ടു എ വോട്ട് യു കോൾ എ കോംപ്ലിക്കേറ്റഡ് ആസ്പെക്ട് ഓഫ് ദ മാനേജ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് മർമ്മ വി ഹാവ് ടു കൺസിഡർ ദ സൂക്ഷ്മ ശരീരം ഓൾസോ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് വൈ വെൻ ഇറ്റ് കംസ് ടു ദ ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് മർമ്മ ഓൺ ദ ബേസിസ് ഓഫ് ദ പ്രോഗ്നോസിസ് that is the sadhya pranahara kalandra pranahara marma etc mean you know that uh, uh, they have been classified on the basis of the panch baudhi tattva so there the sukshma bhava of the sharira comes into play so not only in the case of marma sharira uh, while uh, examining a patient or just before arriving at a diagnosis every physician should take into consider the sukshma sharira and the stola sharira into consideration so that is very uh, uh, relevant in the current practice also okay now what what is the exact criteria of classification of marma now we have uh, the topic uh, is shaka marma so we all know the sharira is basically uh, what you call it is divided into the shatangata there are many uh, methodologies or very, many angles or you can use any type of lens to view the sharira sukshma sharira stola sharira is a one type of a lens so this is another type of a lens see we, we, we the sharira is classified the stola sharira especially is classified into shatangas that is the four shaka the madhya kaya and the shiras okay now they have been classified uh, as shaka marma on the basis of the shatanga okay that is on the uh, base of the location but there are many other types of classification of marma that is based on the prognosis based on the pramana and all those things that you, you you have learned in your uvg classes so but the exact class criteria for the classification of marma is nothing but the convenience of the chigilsa or for the convenience of the vaidya so what is the exact purpose of a medical science or health science it is definitely to help the people to regain health so regaining health is a part of the chigilsa so this is the introductory remark which i have to make with regard to the marma sharira and uh, the usual approach that is followed while teaching and learning marma sharira is that acharya has uh, what you call allotted a separate chapter for the marma that is vagbada and susruta uh, the um, charakacharya has uh, what you call uh, postulated the trimarmiya concept but he has never negated the uh, 107 marma concept so what we usually follow while teaching and learning the marma is that by taking to consideration the description of the marma we often try to correlate that marma to a structure in the modern anatomy because the knowledge and modern anatomy is definitely essential in the current practice so this correlating marma with the structures of mo- uh, modern anatomy i have underlined that word might not be rational in many circumstances it is rational in many circumstances for example definitely the janu marma bigata when it comes to sandhi marma we definitely know it is a type of the injury I mean that cause that definitely causes a debility now there are certain other marma hridaya marma bigata there is no doubt in that the hridaya marma bigata definitely refers to the muscular organ called hridaya which is located in the middle mediastinum when it comes to the shankha marma bigata there is no doubt that the region of terion where the confluence of four bones are uh, four bones uh, has occurred and just below the terion there is a very important artery that supplies the brain so sir, in many marmas almost half of the marmas we can correlate it specifically to a anatomical structure but it is not rational in many uh, circumstances because the management criteria of the marma is one the type of injury whether it is a piercing injury or a blunt injury the second is the site of injury where ex- what exactly is the site of the injury even while in the prognostic classification of marma 
ट्रांसफॉम इन टू का Kalandra pranaharan de vidham vaigalya karama pe. So if the margins of the kalandra pranahara marma are affected, definitely the prana will be saved, but the vigilada will persist. That is the second. First is type of injury. Second is the site of injury, and third is the extent of penetration. So that is why the pramana of many marmas have been told. The pramana of marma is definitely a highly debated topic. because uh, people always or the students always ask the question even when i was a student i i have asked the question whether it is the length breadth uh, depth or the circumference of a mama but actually uh, you know uh, what uh, we have to assume is that there as in the introductory slide i told it depends on the convenience of the vaidya we have to consider all the factors in it and obviously there is a tamil varma shastra and malaya uh, uh, in kerala you, when you come you know when you come to kerala there is a kalari marma though the concept are same the points and approach is different but there are many concept that is common in the management of varma and they consider the marma pramana as a depth depth into which the pressure is being applied so third so third criteria uh, mean for the management of marma that is considered as the extent of penetration and the fourth is poisonous substances that is toxicity inducing toxicity see poisonous substances coated on weapons which prevented the wound healing process so that is definitely another criteria which need to be considered at that time because definitely uh, this science was written uh, 4000 or 3000 uh, years ago where Uh, the living conditions and of, uh, human was uh, humans were extremely different we did not have industrial revolution we did not have vehicles we did, we have very we had very less machines so we had to work with the hand so certain concept you know susurra has done a statistic or susurra or vagbada or charaga whoever it is they have done a statistical analysis and they have presented those uh, those uh, concept with the with the scenario that was present at that time but the anatomical consideration of these uh, what you call uh, uh, points definitely remains intact okay that definitely remains intact but the point is the way in which we view and understand the concept that is what i'll be trying to communicate in this class because i believe that uh, uh, the there are a number of possibilities in which a disease or a condition can be uh viewed understood and treated in ayurveda that does not show shows the chaos in our science that shows the possibilities of our science okay so but there is the concept of uh, marma and uh, this is definitely the hardcore concept uh, coming to hardcore concept saptotara marma shadam you all know there are one or seven marmas in the sharira according to sura and balpada the marmas are explained as a separate chapter in susura samhita and ashtanga hridaya in susura samhita it is detailed in the sixth chapter of sharira sthana titled pratyeka marma nirdesham sharira and in ashtanga hridaya it is detailed in the fourth chapter of the sharira sthana titled marma vibhagam sharira acharya charaga has opined that there are one or seven marmas he has never negated that theory or concept but has grossly classified the marma into three so he postulated the trimarmiya concept the three marmi as you all know the shiras the hridaya and the basti so the uniqueness of the charaka concept so there are many shlokas in the charaka siddhisthana and kalpasthana chingusa sthana where the importance of the three marmi is explained or postulated by charaka so this is one of the shlokas that is hridaya murdini bastocha mrinam prana pratishtita tasma tesham sada yatnam purvira paripalane so the, these three are said to be the sites of prana that is one uh, reason why uh, charaka has uh, what you call concised the one not seven marmas into three into these three marmias there is another concept which is told by many senior physicians that the siras the uh, hridaya and the basti happens to be the satyo pranahara vada sthana pitta sthana and tapa sthana and there is another simile that has been quoted by uh, charaka uh, that is uh, Uh, i don't exactly remember the beginning of the sloka but that simile i still remember dinagare dinagare vyaptam idi sharira that is 
just like one sun provides energy and light to the entire universe to all the planets similarly the prabhava of these three marma is prevalent uh, throughout the body so he is telling that these 107 marmas are there and but their effect can be concentrated to three marmas so there are many uh, what you call uh, slokas and similes used by charaka to explain his unique concept of uh, what you call trimarmiya so trimarmiya is a concise concept okay but practically if you want to approach uh, what you call um, uh, the, uh, the uh, marma or you want to treat a pa patient using the concept of marma you definitely need to understand this 107 marma concept okay and this you all know uh, this sloka uh, that is marmani mamsa sira snayi vasti sandhi pada teshu swabhava teva visheshana prana tishandi tasva karma swabhavida tasthana bhavan apathindi mean this means that you know in the first year in the padartha vijnana you will be taught about the concept of pancha mahabhut so we ayurveda people we believe we have our own terminologies our own parlance we believe that every substance in the universe that is living or non living is made up of pancha mahabhut suppose there is a stone that is lying on the ground or the paper weight that is on the table that is definitely hard it has a shape it has a mass so definitely it is Parthiva Mahabuddha predominant, but definitely it has the what you call participation or it has the components of the other four Mahabuddha semi. Similar is the concept of Marma. So there is a, a classification of Marma on the basis of Stana that I told as a Shaka Marma, uh, Purusha Marma, Udara Marma, Uro Marma that, uh, that you all know. Second is the classification on the basis of Marma Vastu. That is whether it is a mamsa marma, sira marma, snayu marma, asti marma, or sandhi marma. So here we have to take that initial concept into consideration that a marma might be classified as a mamsa marma, but definitely it has the confluence of the sira or the presence of sira, snayu, asti, and sandhi in it. Okay. So uh, before getting into these individual marmas, I would like to explain one more concept with regard to the classification of marma. So I told one classification you all know depending on the position. Second classification on the effect that is very simple. Sadhya Pranahara, Kalandra Pranahara, Vaikalyagara, Rujagara, and Vishalyagara. Third is on the basis of Marma Vastu. So the exact criteria, what is the exact criteria? Now I myself told in the, uh, in, uh, I, I myself told in the, after showing this slide that it is the predominance of one structure. Now there is another concept that uh, lies behind the classification of marma. For example, the Shanka marma. Now, the Shanka marma is uh, classified as a uh, what you call asti marma. Okay, why it is classified as an asti marma? If that asti undergoes a rupture, what happens? Definitely, there is a high possibility of that uh, important artery or that uh, what you call that vital artery that is the middle meningeal artery that is lying just beneath the uh, what you call Shanka Marma to rupture. The high possibility, not the high possibility, you have to tell almost 99% it will uh, rupture. So, why it has been classified as Asti Marma? Because it is the Asti that is providing the protection. Similar is the case of uh, some Marmas, not in every Marmas, I am telling the criteria of classification. Another example which I can easily put in front of you is the uh, what you call the Indrabasti Marma. Indrabasti Marma is the only Marma in the region of leg. Okay, so it is a Mamsa Marma. Why it is classified as a Mamsa Marma? Because Indramasti Marma obviously it refers to the region of calf. And you all know the calf muscles are gastronomous and soleus. And the soleus muscle is often called the peripheral heart. So however lean or thick the person is, the region of the calf region definitely is Mamsa. If you touch it, there is a Mamsa over there. The Mamsa means it can be a Peshi, it can be a tendon. Whatever it is, there is the predominance of the Mamsa Dadu there. Suppose there a penetrating injury occurs, deep, it goes deep, then there is a high possibility of a vessel or a nerve getting injured, uh, what you call, which is lying just uh, what you call below that bulk of muscle. So the criteria of classification is not the predominance of that uh, structure. The other view, view which you, you should understand is that I think this has been explained in the Malayalam uh, Ashangarhadeya uh, translation of Shairasthana by Govindan Vaidya. 
this concept which i am telling is explained in that uh, book but it is in malayalam okay so it is actually that mamsa which is providing the protection to the vital structure so that is and whereas in the in the case of hridaya or in the case of basti definitely that description exactly matches the vital organ so here the, in that case you know it exactly refers to that organ only okay so uh, it has to be viewed that is why ayurveda you know there is a high possibility that you have to understand many thing contextually okay now this is the what you call the uh, names of the marma and i have put it as a what you call a slide so in lower limb we have the shipra marma talahardaya marma kurcha marma kurcha shira marma gulpa marma indrabasti janu ani uri tohita shandidapa in the upper limb uh, uh, the shipra talahardaya kurcha kurcha shira and uh, homologous to gulpa you have the manibandha marma homologous to janu we have the kurpa marma homologous to urvi you have the bahvi and homologous to vitapa you have the kakshata okay now we will slowly go into the details of each marma so the first marma that has been detailed in our textbook is the shipra marma so uh, one more concept is so getting into that because uh, uh, you know you get a, when you teach for a long time you get lot of concept and you often feel that what you taught in the beginning of your career might not be right certain concepts i'm not telling the hardcore part certain concepts need to be injected into students or you need to convey it to students so that they can implement it themselves one thing is very clear when this uh, time in which this ayurveda text were written you know the management of sepsis was not so easy there is a management of infection it was not an easy task because you know if some toxic substance was coated in that weapon suppose that injury has happened in a warfare so that is a very what you call grave condition that mean it's very tough for the issues kashtasadya so the in the current you know in the current era definitely we can never what you call uh, what you call eclipse the advance of modern science so we need to integrate uh, the uh, principles of modern medicine to understand our science so integration does is not creating a super hybrid as you see in the jurassic park movie you know after each part comes you know you get a super dinosaur is coming out so integration is not about creating a super hybrid so it is actually using the principles or the using the concept of modern science to throw more light of clarity into ayurveda so in the current era for a physician what he has an advantage compared to the physician even 50 years ago is that in the current arena the management of the infection or sepsis is very easy so there are number of techniques that have been developed because even with the normal tetanus vaccination is still there so the management of sepsis i believe if we, after studying or when we uh, complete the uh, com complete reading through the marma sharira i would believe that that was the greatest challenge uh, i personally believe maybe your teachers in your college might have a different opinion because uh, he has uh, elaborately mentioned the management of rena grenthi arbuda everything susuras susuras definitely the father of surgery that everyone has agreed to that but uh, uh, so you know the management of sepsis was the greatest challenge that uh, susurda had definitely definitely in his time as a surgeon because susurda is definitely no doubt a surgeon so he always directly hit the matter because he 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 always had to manage the emergency condition with regard to the protection of pramana only so coming to our first marma that is shipra marma and the shloka goes tatra padasya angushta angulyor mate shipra nama varma tatra vidyasya akshepa kena mara so it is located between the what you call the great toe and the second toe of foot and when it comes to the upper arm it is located between the thumb and the index finger it is a shaka marma a snayu marma a kalandra prana hara marma pramana's ardhanguli and the number there are four shipra marma this obviously is the location and uh, see this is uh, what you see when you remove the skin and just the superficial fascia so the region of marma is the web space between the first and second metatarsal bone or the big toe and the second toe so the muscles in this region are arranged as layers in foot and there are number of intertarsal ligaments with led to a classification of shipra as snayu marma so an injury led to the plantar digital vessels and nerves and homologously in the upper limb the region of marma is the web space between the first and the second what you call uh, uh, metacarpal bone and you all know there are 20 intrinsic muscles in our hand and susura might have classified most of them as snayu due to their small size and why this space is given so important 
why there is no marma in the second web space or on the third web space or on the fourth web, web space is a question. So definitely the reason, logical reason is thumb is a master finger. So evolution definitely will bring about a lot of changes, but thumb is a master finger and the first web space was given more importance compared to others. So Susruta definitely is also a statistician. That is why he has uh, what you call given the numbers in all uh, contexts. That is even in the case of Siraviyata Viti or in uh, Akini Karma Viti, he has enlisted the types of Durveda. Uh, so he is definitely a good statistician. So he might have noted that this region is more prone to injury and injuries that occur in this region are more fatal. So an injury will lead to the damage of the underlying pig of the radial artery and the median nerve. So Acharya Susura mentioned that this marma can sometimes strain. This is the only marma where he has told Shipram Kadachit Ashu Mareinti. It can sometimes turn into Sajjo Prana Haramama. And Akshepaga is one among the Vyadavyadis mentioned by Susura and Vahamkar. So Akshepaga in Maranam. So this is where the importance of going through the Tika is there. Because we, we have a terminology which we need to clarify or we, we need more clarification of the terminology. You definitely first have to look into the Tika, whether any explanation has been told about that ter terminology. So here what Akshayapaga, here he has told that it is Vata Vyadi. It is told in Ashtangharavya. So not in the Surya Ashtangharavya. So what is the Akshayapaga? Akshayapaga is one among the Vata Vyadi. So that, so we have to refer the uh, what you call the signs and symptoms of Akshay Bhaga. So Akshay Bhaga, the vayu entering the Dhamini will cause severe spasm and convulsions in the individual. So oh, more of that attacks will be frequent. So Akshay Bhaga is a Vada that uh, causes severe spasms and convulsions. So Dalhana has interpreted the Dhamini as Nadi, which possibly indicates the involvement of nervous system in the Vyadi. Now, this is uh, a painting on Opis Thotanos by a famous anatomist called Charles Bell after whom the bell's palsy is named. So see, the person is arching. This is actually called the hyperextension of the spine. Okay. So the convulsion and spasm caused by an injury due to severe blood loss is closely adherent with the sign found in tetanus. So this opistotanos is actually found in persons who have been diagnosed of tetanus and uh, we, whom we are not able to manage in a safer way. Now in the current era, that is why I told in the introductory mark, See, a death due to a tetanus or a complication of tetanus is almost unknown because of vaccination and definitely currently the management of sepsis has advanced very much. So the signs of opisotanos, the first marma, at that time, you know, it was uh, what you call the hasta, it was the pradhana yantra and man used to do all the work, especially used to work in the field using uh, the hand only. So that site was more prone to injury and the signs of opisotanos, which happens uh, during the uh, tetanus. Opis tetanus, you know, opis then means behind and tonos means tension. Now, it is a state of severe hyperextension and sparsity in which an individual's head, neck, and spinal column enter into a complete bridging or arching position. Okay, so here that is one of the possible reasons why he has told Akshayap, Tatra Vidyasa Akshayapakena Maranam. It doesn't mean that the death will occur due to Akshayapaka. It can occur. So that depends on the site of injury. What I told you, the initial site of injury, the extent of penetration, obviously the age of the patient, the health status of the patient that he has already told in Doga Parisha, Rogi Parisha, everything he has told, uh, how to assess the Roga Rogi. And that also depends on the lack of the patient and the what you call uh, to a certain extent, the skill of the physician or the surgeon. Now, the first one was Shipra. I mean, all marma, you cannot tell that uh, it, it was like that. You cannot use it was. There are many conditions in which you can use it is. In most of the Tamil uh, Varma Shastra and Kadari Marma Shastra, these Shipra Marma and many of these marmas, they are some of the most of the marmas are matching, I told. Not every concept is not matching with the Tamil Varma Shastra and uh, Kerala Kadari Marma. But this Shipra Marma, you know, is a very important, it's a vital energy point. So that is the concept that is being researched now. Now, skin is something that is the main function of skin is Tokyo is definitely sparsha. Skin always likes to be touched. And you know, application of pressure will definitely stimulate certain energy points. That is what the Varma Shastra is telling. 
So that is why I'm telling we need not only an integration with the modern medicine, we need to integrate that with the uh, concept of uh, the Varma Shastra. So we have to see whether the, apart from being anatomically significant, are these areas uh, what you call related to uh, uh, the pathology of other diseases. So I have uh, put forward, I mean, I have collected a modern concept which I'll be telling in the concluding slide. Okay, that is being developed. Now, the second marma is the Talakhurdaya marma. Madhya Manguli Anipur Vena Madhya Pada Talasya Talakhurdaya Nama Tatra Dujapir Marma. One thing I just, uh, I think it was in the slide, Shipra, the word, the certain meaning you can, and uh, what you call, understand from the, what you call, uh, the, or the etymology of the word itself suggests something. Shipra means fast. Talakhurdaya means Hurdaya Baga of the Pada Tala or the Pani Tala. Okay. Certain uh, uh, Marma names you need to look into the dictionary only. Amrakosha Shabdagal. So this is Talakhurdaya means the Hurdaya Baga of. Uh, means very simple to learn. Even if you don't know the sloka, you will never go wrong with this marma because this is a highly mamsala area. Because you know, however thin the person is, even you touch them, say what you call center of the palm or the center of the leg, definitely it will be a little bit spongy only. So, Kirdaya Bhaga of the Pani Tala or the Pada Tala is the Tala Hirdaya Marma. Madhya Manguli Anipur Vena Madhya Pada Tala is the Tala Hirdaya Marma. Tatra Yujabir Maranam. So this is again a Shaka Marma, Mamsa Marma, Kalandra Pranahara Marma, Pramana Ardhanguli number and four num number that is according to Sankhya Pramana, four uh, Talahar there, two on the upper limb and two on the lower limb. So mid located in the exact middle of the sole of the foot in a straight line drawn from the root of the middle toe. Even if you don't remember in a straight line drawn from the root of the middle toe or in a straight line drawn from the root of the middle finger, you, you can easily uh, remember the middle of the palm. Here again, my concept of Shaka Marma, you all know. Kalandra Pranahara Marma, definitely you all know the concept. It results in Ruja and leads to death. Ruja Abir Maranam. That also, as students, I would like to convey to you. It doesn't mean that when it comes to Sadhya Pranahara Marma, death can occur instantly or within seven days. In Kalandra Pranahara Marma, Nashtangar, they have told, Masa Masa Ardha Jeevita. I mean, that can occur, within, can occur between 15 to 30 days. Here, they have classified Mamsa Marma because, as you all know, while dissecting, this is a part which we dissect very nicely. Once you remove the skin, you see the superficial fascia. Then we see the palmar aponeurosis. Aponeurosis and retinacular are nothing but the modification of deep fascia. So, these deep fascia are definitely offering a good protection to the structures lying below. Classical example is, you can use your own, uh, uh, what you call, daily, we just to think into our daily habits. Suppose we are going in a bus from one place to another on a weekend. So we have to reach our home. The bus is crowded. So we are standing in the bus by holding that, what you call the rod above. Even if we hold that rod for two or three hours, definitely our hand uh, uh, will develop a little bit of pain, numbness. There will be pain in the shoulder. But once we get down from the bus and reach our home, definitely we see that after that pressure has been removed, we find that the sole of the Foot is definitely, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, the, uh, what you call the Palmar region, you know, you don't have any pain or numbness over there because God has created the uh, what you call Palmar region or the uh, or God or whatever it is. If you don't believe in God, the evolution is such a way in which the sole of the foot and the palm is shaped and designed like that. See what happens if the sole of the foot develops pain if we walk for uh, uh, walk for one kilo after one kilometer we won't be able to move anywhere. So actually, when it comes to clinical practice, you will know there is a disease called plantar fasciitis, and you will just ask your seniors or teachers. It's a very difficult disease to treat compared to a disease involving a bone. So here, what is happening is that the this is the location we all know. And it is the center of the palm. This is the palmar and the plantar of neurosis are providing a good protection to the structures below. So, mamsamarma is due to thick covering of fascia of neurosis in the palm and foot. So, this is actually the location. And once it is ruptured, see, definitely uh, it will lead to a, it can lead to a rupture of the vessel. And this rujabir maranam, maranam is not. See, don't take words in the direct way. And when you study Marma Sharida, and especially when you study uh, this uh, Ayurvedic part, you have to consider two more things. That is, one, you should read between the lines. There is no doubt in that. 
Second thing is where it has been mentioned. I'm not deviating from the topic where it has been mentioned. So Marma, they have given one separate chapter. Throthus, he has explained along with Damani. Why he has explained with Damani? Why, why, whereas Charaga has allotted a separate chapter for Throthus. And the order in which it has been mentioned. This always you should consider, even while uh, uh, what you call reading the Falasruti of a yoga, Manipatra Lekhya, Falasruti, they are telling Kushka, Shitra, Shwasa, Kasa, Udara, Asha. Or in any uh, disease of Falasruti. Why in this order the diseases have been told? Why in this order the drug is placed? Why it has been told first? So this should come, why there is a separate chapter for Shuddha Yoga? So this why definitely you have, you will get a lot of answers with your experience or you can ask your teachers. I know that many questions are unanswerable. So here the Rujabir Maranam, you know, you should not think it directly. It directly does not mean, uh, uh, mean the concept is, uh, suppose a palmar neurosis or that mamsa and that region is ruptured, it will cause, it will lead to a, what you call a rupture of the vessel and uh, that uh, a death will occur due to bleeding. It's not like that. Suppose a uh, penetrating injury occurs in that region. Uh, initially, if that sepsis is not managed or that infection is not managed or wound is not properly managed, that can slowly lead to the death of the uh, individual. It is in that way you have to un understand the word marana that has been told. It doesn't mean that as soon as the uh, what you call talarde marma is uh, injured, it will lead to uh, ruja and then lead to marana. It is not like that. If that person is lucky, if he is young, he, if he has sharira bala, if the roga bala, rogi bala is all positive, if the physician is good enough, definitely he can survive. So this is the modern aspect of uh, what you call, um, and definitely this is again one of the stimulating points. Even there are many other uh, signs like acupuncture, I don't, because I have not studied acupuncture I, and I don't know about the scientific aspect of that. But there are many other what you call uh, massage techniques, especially using Kalari Marma itself. So these are these can all be considered uh, as energy points also. Okay, and this is uh, manifestations due to a severe close adherence of the neurovascular network and any rupture in the superficial palmaras and uh, can cause a vasovagal shock and uh, it can lead to death and can also uh, cause death due to tetanus. Okay, and what I told in the while uh, detailing for Shipramarma is that. The greatest challenge which Susurta had definitely is the management of infection of the sepsis. See, uh, this is uh, the sloka that justifies. Because after mentioning these marmas, he has used this sloka. After mentioning about the shaka marma, he has told, Shipreshu tatrasata leshu hateshu rektan gachaitva avanasya rucham karodi evam minasham upayante hi tatra vidda briksha here he is telling that if severe hemorrhage has occurred, severe blood loss has occurred, what happens? Vata Pitta Kaba, which is the important dosha, definitely Vata. Pittam Pangu, Pitta is lame, Kaba is lame. Huh? Uh, but uh, Vada is not lame. Vittam Pangu, Kafam Pangu, Pango Mala Dadava, Malo Dada, Dadu are all lame. It is the Vayu that is propelling all. Vayu is the most mischievous. So it is most important one. So that is the that is why it is mentioned as the first dosha. If Vada Gopa occurs, you know, all stability is lost. So if when Vada Gopa occurs here, that you will learn in that view of basic uh, classes about the I'm not going to into the doshic aspect of these things. Uh, but just before getting into this power uh, uh, one thing I have heard. suppose there's a small kid in your home and that kid is very naughty and uh, suppose he is uh, what you call uh, climbing on everything and once uh, suppose he falls down from a window and he hits he, what you call his head hits somewhere or his hand hits somewhere and he has developed a confusion uh, what what is the initial thing that you will do uh, can one of you just, I just want to interact with one of uh, any doctors that are taking part. Can you just unmute and test? Because otherwise it will be a one-sided class. What, uh, what you will do? Someone is ready to unmute. 
Okay. I request the participants to unmute themselves. One of you. One or two of you. Sir, namaste, sir. You would pick huh. the child up. <laughs> That's and... true. First console it. Okay. Yes. When it comes to the Aushada, selection of Aushada, what is the first thing that is the better? Suppose it is available. It would not be available everywhere. So it depends, of course, on the injury, no? Compression. Yeah, exactly. Compression. Exactly. 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 But what the basic concept is that even in Bhagna, you know, first he has Ajara's advice to do the Thara using Narpamrakar. First, initially what happened in the initial phase, it is the Pitta Dosha that is happening. It is better to apply some uh, Shirabala or something, uh, Shirabala, Avarti or something, which is a little bit Vata Pittahara at that region. So that it can't do. If it is a wound, there is nothing we can do, obviously. If it is an open wound. Okay. So initially, the Pitta Dosha actually undergoes Koba. In this, these kinds of wounds, the Vada undergoes Dosha later only. So this is a highly debated topic, as Madam told. If it is a big open wound, there is nothing we can do. But otherwise, in the case of a small condition, suppose internal structure is not, uh, there is uh, no damage to the tissue. Uh, I mean, there is only, a, it is just a blunt injury. First, we need to pacify the Pitta. And then only in the final, after, then, then only the Vada comes into play. In the case of Bruna and especially in the case of Bhagna and Dom. So here, what he is saying that the Vata, I mean, I'm not getting into Doshi Kasha because that's a highly extensive topic. This Vata Dosha will definitely be because of his propelling nature. Shipra, as it is told in Charangadara Samhita, this is a quotation from Charangadara Samhita, Pittam Bangu, Kapam Bangu, Pango Maladadava, Vayuna Yetra Niyende, Tatra Gachandi Mekavar. It will definitely cause, because of that Pitta Vardhana or the Pitti law, what you call the lack of equilibrium. The Vata will definitely cause the Vinash of the Sharia. So here he is advising an amputation at the region of Manibanda or the Gulfadesha. So why amputation is done? Amputation is very commonly done in the current in the current surgical, it is uh, surgical scenario, it is done in case of motor vehicle accident and moreover in case of the in diabetic patients. They are removing that part so that that gangrene or that uh, death of the tissue does not progress further. Gangrene and necrosis are more diabetic gangrene utens. It's a, they both are uh, death of tissue. So the death of tissue does not progress. So he is telling that just the damage, just like the damaged twig of a tree is removed or a branch of a tree is removed. Similarly, amputation is done in the Manipanda Gulfa Desha to uh, what you call uh, uh, to save the patient. So. So, same concept has been told by Ashtanga Hatyagara. So, Jeevitam Praninam Tatra, Dekte Tishtadi Tishtandi. So, he is telling Chaitana Sandhi Desha, Sangrijda Sirahyana. He is uh, again advising uh, amputation. Okay. Now, the next marma is a Purcha marma. The word Purcha means brush. So, here you all know, as I told uh, uh, five minutes ago, the order of mentioning marma is from the distal to the proximal, especially in the case of Shaka. Okay. So here, Purcha, that is Shiprasya Ubarishtat Ubeta, Purcha Nam, Tatarpadesya Brahmana Vepana Bhavati. So located two angulas above the Shipramarma on both foot and hand. Here comes another terminology that is still debated in all PG classes, that is Ubeta. So, in the case of the Prishta Marma, that is Marma in the region of back, the Ubayada means on both sides of the vertebral column, that is right and left side. So, for our convenience, we still it is rational to consider the word Ubayada as right and left side or the right and left limb. But we can also, uh, what you call, uh, put forward a doubt, or this has been debated in many Shari Rajna Pajikas where the term Ubeda means the anterior and posterior aspect also. So in the case of Shipramarma, should we consider the anterior aspect only or the posterior aspect also? So what do you, you feel? One of you please unmute it. Do you, do you think in the case of uh, uh, Shipramarma? Because Marma, you know, they have, uh, uh, I think it, the hand has been held in the anatomical position only. So whatever it is, Shipramarma should be considered only the anterior aspect or the posterior aspect. So there, I think uh, one of you, please, because these are, these are some questions uh, that can be debated for a long time. What do you think? Is it the anterior aspect or only the palmar aspect of the hand you should take or you should not take the dorsal aspect? Probably both. 
probably both is what <laughs> if you complete your anatomy pg or rajna charita pg probably both would be the answer ma'am i agree with you though many of the teachers still disagree with that so uh, what you call this ubayata can be it's a shaka marma snayu marma again this so this is under concept you know you have to take why it is told as a snayu marma so because the snayu is there in both side in the pamara aspect we have the uh, tendons of the flexor compartment passing uh, beneath and above the uh, flexor retinaculum and in the dorsal aspect we have the muscle uh, tendons of the uh, extensor compartment passing above the uh, extensor retinaculum so the, it is a vaikalyakara marma and pramana is so panitala pramana and uh, this uh, number is 4 so this is actually the brush that has been used in the ancient time you know the painting brush they use you can consider as a brush shape i mean there is definitely another controversy with regard to shape of the brush so in today you get number of brushes okay but it is not the tooth brush okay and uh, in the dorsal aspect you can consider it like this and porcha marma in hand uh, can be correlated to the palmar aponeurosis that is uh, uh, Palmar, that is the tip of uh, what you call coronary palmar. Poor children, foot can be called plantar. A serious injury to this will cause severe damage to the underlying vessels and nerves. And the other side, you can uh, consider this as the extensor muscle tendons. Okay, and when you consider the dorsal aspect. Okay, so it is again considered as a snayu marma. And uh, here the snayu, you can tell that uh, mean underlying nerves and vessels, or it will impair the what you call. the uh, what you call uh, if an injury to muscles uh, occur it can impair the functions also then comes kurcha shira now two marmas have been mentioned they were very they are proximal to each other kurcha and the kurcha kurcha shira means the head of kurcha so it is the position they have told us gulfa sandhayada upeda kurcha shira tatra ruja shofo located just below the gulfa sandhi angle joint is the kurcha shira marma And an injury to this region causes ruja and shofa. In a homologous way, it is situated below the mani bandha marma. An injury will cause severe ruja and shofa. It is a vaikalyakara marma. Sorry, it is a ruja kara marma. It is a snayu marma. Pramana one angle, and the number is four. Okay. And here etymology word suggests so because it is fastened up at one end like a brush, the dorsal aspect. So, Purusha Shira Marma in hand can be correlated to the apex of Palmar aponeurosis. Purusha Shira Marma in the foot can be correlated to the apex of Plantar aponeurosis. A serious injury to this will cause severe damage to the underlying nerves and vessels. And there is one more correlation which I have found, and that I'll be telling after the Manipanda Marma. And region located below the retinaculum from where the extensor tendon emerges, and the region the dorsal aspect of the foot is below the retinaculum from where the extensor tendons emerge. And next comes the gulfa and manibanda, and pada jankayo sandhane gulfa tatra ruja stabda pada da kancha dava. So it is located in the pada, uh, in between the pada and the janka. An injury will cause ruja pain, stabda pada da and kancha da. It is a shaga marma. It is a sandhi marma. Ruja kara marma. Pramana is two angle. Number is two. Now gulfa marma definitely it is very clear. It refers to the What you call bones, ligaments, and tendons, which contribute the formation of ankle joint. So often we have found, we look into the uh, books written by the uh, authors of the current era. We find that many of them have specifically correlated this sandhi marma to a structure, or a specific ligament, or specific bone, or specific. I don't think it's so rational because you know uh, the gulfa marma and uh, uh, janu marma. uh they they are supported them there are the two important weight bearing joints and they are supported by a number of ligaments see uh there are number of ayurvedic practitioners who practice sports medicine in kerala and i have listened to their classes actually their anatomical knowledge is definitely excellent and uh, what from their statistical analysis and what i have been taught they have uh, applied their application of the science they are telling that Certain ligament injuries I mean when the patient comes to you with an MRI and all, it is very easy to diagnose. Certain uh, uh, what you call ligament injuries, we can manage with uh, what you call our own bandaging and support. But there are certain uh, levels of tears 
of especially in the case of knee joint the medial meniscal tear they are telling that there is no there is only one way you have to go for a surgery so here comes the differentiation between a gulfa marma abigada and the gulfa sandhi abigada suppose a person has had a fall he is a young a young 25 year old man has while he was climbing down the stairs he missed a step he has inverted or averted his foot he is coming to you limping so you examine the patient and you see that there is no possibility of no fracture or you just uh, what you call uh, do an uh, radiological investigation he comes with an x ray and you find that uh, there is uh, no involvement of the bone tissue there so it's a sprain you can just bandage him or uh, give an oil or a ointment or a liniment for external application or you are bandaging with murvan or kaithirmeni or whatever it is and you ask him to take rest for a couple of days or uh, four or five days and ask you give some kashaya or tablet for the uh, to relieve the pain and you ask him to come after four days he is coming after three or four days and telling that he is relieved of pain actually what has happened there is that gulfa sandhi abhidha because gulfa is a important sandhi and it is also we mentioned as marma it doesn't mean that sandhi is marma at the same time a uh, young 25 year old same person he is a footballer so he he has kicked a football and after kicking uh, doing a forceful kick he has uh, developed a sudden pain he is not able to or the walk he is not able to go, what you call put his foot on the uh, uh, on the ground so definitely you ask him to take an x ray or mri with the x ray i think uh, only we will be able to identify the fracture because uh, if you want to identify the injury with regard to soft tissues you need to go for an mri so you are suggesting that present an mri and you find that there is a very severe tear he comes with the report and you can also see the image so in that condition what happens it is definitely a janu marma vigan so that is a concept i think which we need to convey to the first year students definitely they will be taught by the experts in shalya tantra to manage these conditions but i think often uh, after the graduation they ask us so what is the uh, relevance of teaching gulfa marma see if it has been managed it means that it is a gul sandhya bigata or uh, it is a uh, even if in the case of bagna cannot be classified as a marma at the same time a 60 year old lady is coming she is coming to us with an actor you find that she is severely osteoporotic here what has happened here actually the what you call the pathology has led slowly slowly has led to a gulfa uh, gulfa or a janu marma bigata so this is the differentiation between a sandhi marma bigata because this you know this you need to study in a excellent and detailed way because there are very few practitioners orthopedic practitioners even in kerala so with this if you are interested in orthopedics not only ayurveda you need to study the modern anatomy thoroughly you can actually you can develop an excellent practice so especially sandhi marma and the utricular ligaments and the structures of the sandhi you need to study very deeply even the first year i would advise all the students so here it has to be classified as a gulfa marma yoga only depend depending on the extent of the injury okay even you you know that uh, uh, many professional uh, footballers and cricketers they had to end their career because they had a recurrent injury in their knee joint many cricketers and footballers many even many sports persons even uh, even tennis stars what happens their endurance goes down we definitely there is a laxity of the joints so knee joint and ankle joint are very important and this is manibandha marma and visheshastu manibande kundada only one word sustra has mentioned to describe the uh, what you call the effect of manibandha marma bigada so this is again justifying what i told you because this what i am conveying in this class i think a teacher is uh, not a uh, what you call a propagator or a propeller of a concept he is now the teachers are to be facilitators so i am just facilitating or just putting in front of you what i have learned from the teachers at a, as shakespeare once told i have seen only by standing on the uh, shoulders of the giants definitely so what i am telling you or conveying to you is what i have learned from my teachers so this concept you can elaborate so the kundada kundada means karasya agarmanya so that is what alhana has classified in the sorry clarified in the uh, or redacted in this uh, tika so karasya agarmanya to means you are not able to do anything with your karasya so how can you uh, what you call correlate manibandha marma to a specific structure so that depends on the extent of the injury which i was telling in the first slide 
and homologous good form is the money from the mama and upper limb and injury to mama cause wound again is inability to action with the hand and it is a shaka mama sandhi mama rujagara mama and pramana is two angula and number is two pramana definitely is a highly debated concept i would tell pramana uh, it is better to take the tamil varma concept because they are telling that at each depth you are what you call energizing that uh, point or you are uh, accessing uh, what you call the various energy levels by increasing the depth and pressure so that we need to integrate and manivanta uh, marma i mean what i am telling is that the pramana concept is very less even if you are a classical ayurvedic practitioner so you complete a shalya tantra and you are doing an orthopedic practice the pramana concept comes into your daily practice or comes into application in a very few conditions only okay i would tell rather you, you will not take the pramana concept into consideration unless you are doing some energy stimulation so this is the manibandha and the manibandha as you all know etymology means a string of beats mani means beats and a string of beats bones are structures in one the formation of energy. and this is one uh, uh, explanation which i got from the textbook of keith elmore and arthur of delhi this definitely was uh, talked to me by my teachers in udupi so this is the fracture of scaphoid this is from keith elmore and arthur of delhi and this is one of the easiest books you can uh, read and learn with regard to clinical oriented anatomy tomorrow you pass bams uh, most of the anatomy will uh, it might have gone out of your uh, basal ganglia so you want to study something or you want to refer something this is a very useful text because it is very simple and very useful too so here it is said that scaphoid fracture is the most frequently fractured carpal bone it often results from the fall of a palm when the hand is abducted so the fracture occur occurring across the narrow part of that is the base of the scaphoid scaphoid means boat shape so there is a base of the scaphoid i think you don't go to that depth in the first year ug pain occurs primarily on the lateral side of the wrist especially during dorsiflexion and abduction of the hand okay an initial radiographs of the wrist may not reveal a fracture often this injury is misdiagnosed as a severely sprained wrist that i told sprained wrist is a manibandha sandhi abhigat at the same time a fracture of scaphoid is a manibandha marma abhigat when you because you want we want or the world wants everything to be equated with the, the parallels of modern anatomy so this is one concept that is very uh, that is not conveyed properly i think this is uh, evident from this description so radiographs taken 10 to 14 days later reveal a fracture uh, because bone resorption has occurred there so owing to the poor blood supply to the proximal part of the scaphoid union of the fractured parts may take at least 3 months so avascular necrosis of the proximal fragment of scaphoid or pathologic necrosis means the pathological death of necrosis and gangrene are both death of tissues so if the what is being concept is that the concept that has been conveyed with this description is that if the fracture of scaphoid is missed it is one of the most missed fractures in orthopedic practice if it is missed it leads to the necrosis of the scaphoid bone scaphoid is a very small bone so what happens as an outcome the outcome is that the pain will persist for a long time in some cases it is necessary to fuse the carpus you have to open and do the surgery because to uh, arthrodesis because otherwise may occur to produce de 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 degenerative joint disease and severe pain will happen will occur for a long time now this is another concept called or a detour space it's not uh, found commonly in all anatomical tests it is named for the radiologist called etin detour and he is a french uh, what you call uh, uh, anatomist and the space in the wrist bounded by the hamate capitate trochanter and lunate bones so the detour space comes into play because in theology the crucifixion points of christ have been subjected to a number of uh, phd thesis works so the crucifixion points were those points that uh, that were injured that causes severe pain but death only after a long time so uh, detour space or such a space uh, that if you drill a nail or a foreign body through that severe pain will occur but very less bleeding so taking into consideration the detour space and the manibandha what you call the fracture of the scaphoid 
definitely it justifies the classification of the concept of Dujakara Marma. Which and all are the Dujakara Marma? One of you, I you 10, 10 students, one of you, not to teach them. Which are the uh, Dujakara Marmas? There are eight of them. Which and all? One of you. Almost 56 participants are there. One of the students. Urja Shira, Gulfa, and Manipanta. Okay. Now, when it comes to the case of Gulfa Marma, one point I uh, just uh, I told uh, bones, ligaments, and tendons. You know about the Achilles tendon. So, what is Achilles tendon? Ach See, this is it is shown that the picture uh, on the right side below there is an Achilles tendon is shown. Achilles tendon is a tendon that joins the uh, what? what this is. I think now this is the okay. Hold, okay I am I, I to highlight this. Thing. This is the Achilles tendon. The two heads of the gastronomies and the soleus are joined together to form a tendon. And these two muscles are they join in the posterior surface of the calcaneus bone via the Achilles tendon. So uh, in the, uh, 30 or 40 years ago, often the policemen they used to chase the criminals. And uh, they were experts in using the lati. Now, lati was not only used as a weapon to hit the people, but they were uh, experts in using lati in a number of ways. That stick the policemen. So often they were experts in throwing the lati. That they uh, often knew to through the they knew to through the lati so that it hits the Achilles of the thief who is running in front of them. Suppose a person who is running hap happens to get hit in that region. Definitely, he cannot. He will definitely get uh, what you call paralyzed for uh, 10 minutes because there is a sudden cramp that develops. And if the Achilles tendon is cut, because Achilles is a tendon that joins two bulky muscles of the leg to the calcaneus bone. It is named after Variacor Achilles. And the story is that uh, Achilles' mother was uh, given a boon that uh, she had to dip the uh, baby Achilles in a river. So that that whatever part of the body goes under that uh, divine river, uh, he will uh, he, you cannot slay him by uh, injuring or hitting that part. So the story tells it's a myth. The story tells uh, goes like she caught Achilles by the ankle joint and dipped that uh, baby Achilles into that uh, divine river. So every single uh, part of the body came under the river, got strong, but the Achilles part that remained at this. The similar story is there in Mahabharata uh, when uh, about the Jodhana because Urubangam, the Thai region was the uh, what you call the uh, weak point of uh, the Jodhana. The similar stories you can find in every mythology. That is how why the Achilles the tendon is considered as a weak point of a person. It is used in colloquial language. So all this justify the concept of Rujakarma. What is the concept of Rujakarma? Whatever be the Panchabodhic aspect be. Long standing pain. So the injury to the, I mean, the scaphoid injury goes, uh, what you call, uh, untreated or it is not treated or diagnosed properly, it can cause that thought space. There are, it's a, there is an anatomical space over there. Injury to the Achilles tendon. Definitely it will affect, and Pucha Shira. And this is uh, the plantar fasciitis. I have seen many Ayurvedic doctors. It is, we need to throw more light, in, light into that. Uh, usually the lady will come to us, it is usually female patients that get affected. They will tell uh, after getting up in the morning, I'm not just able to place my uh, hand on the, my leg on the uh, earth and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not able to do the activities in the kitchen in the morning. So I'm not able to take bath, I'm not able to go to the temple, it's severe pain. So the plant pressure is a very tough condition to manage. So we need to throw more light into all those things. Okay. So this all justifies the classification of Manibandha, Gulfa, yes, Dujakara Marma. So not only is they taking the Panjavadika aspect into consideration, but by taking into aspect <laughs> the aspects of modern anatomy. Then comes the Indrabasti Marma. Parshani Pradi Janka Madhya Indrabasti. Patra Shonida Kshayena Marma. Now here the concept of Viveda you cannot apply. Because this is the only Marma that is mentioned in the region of foot. And it is located in the Jankam at the middle of the leg in Parshanim Pradi, in line of the heel. 
so definitely it refers to the posterior aspect of the leg because the anterior aspect of the leg you know center of leg it is the anterior border of the shaft of the tibia which we call as the shin that is the bony part that is an asti anterior part is definitely is an, is an asti and the posterior part we have this marma and injury to this marma cause shoni the kshaya and marana tatra shoni the kshaya and marana now here i have myself put the translation of shoni the kshaya and marana as death due to hemorrhage because that is what it is even if you look the uh, pv sharma textbook also you find death due to hemorrhage this is another concept that we have debated in our pg classes thus shoni the kshaya refers to hemorrhage so why he didn't use shoni the strava why he used shoni the kshaya see shoni the kshaya can be hemorrhage but we have to understand shoni the kshaya as the met the what you call something to do with hemopoiesis and hemodynamics rather than hemopoiesis the hemodynamics because you all know why the soleus is called peripheral heart you all know that the saphenous vein all veins they have a valve mechanism so it is with the valve mechanism that the venous blood is able to return back again because it has to work against the gravity and the soleus is functioning as a peripheral heart so there definitely the contraction of soleus muscle is also happening there suppose an injury to that region of this definitely if the soleus muscle is injured the peripheral heart function it ceases and definitely if it is a penetrating move there is a high possibility of the uh, lower limb vessels getting uh, I think something has come in the chat box. Yeah, hemopoiesis. Uh, it is one of your uh, can be impedi uh, can be impedimented hemopoiesis. It's true. It's true, man. So that is what I am telling. Uh, what happens in the case of a uh, varicose patient? You call it siragrandi, whatever it is. What is happening in the case of varicosity? That venous blood is getting accumulated in that vein, and that is getting engorged. and this indravasti marma vigada is can also occur not as an agantuja uh, what you call uh, abigada it can also occur as a nija 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 vyadi also in my clinical practice i have noted a few cases the patient is coming and the uh, signs which i are telling is that his both uh, foot and especially from the uh, distal part of the leg is dark in color he is having itching over that region and he has gone to an ayurvedic shop obviously in ayurvedic shop the people who give the ayurvedic medicines they are almost equal to doctors they consider themselves to be doctors unfortunately and they have given him some taila some eladi kera or nalpamradi kera for that itching and uh, they even the patient and the uh, vendor of that medicine has they both have diagnosed it as some uh, what you call uh, a diagnosis as some eczema or dermatitis but even the patient is telling that i have started the discoloration was initially only in the region of foot now it is started to come to that uh, leg region in that condition you know what we need to do is that as doctors we definitely we need to look into the dorsalis pedis i mean we tibial artery pulse and all we should do but apart from that the investigation which we need to subject that patient is Called the lower limb Doppler. That is an investigation. It's called which lower limb? Suppose is one limb is only only in the right limb, lower limb is there. You have to subject that patient to that right lower limb Doppler, arterial and venous. There is arterial Doppler is there and uh, another venous. Yes, exactly. DVT, deep vein thrombosis. I will look into the chat box later. Okay, <laughs> just one chat. It can be deep vein thrombosis also and of in. The, when the result of that doppler comes you know they will write so and so perforators patent patent means it is open there is perforators are the uh, what you call uh, twigs that connect the superficial veins to the deep veins suppose they are telling perforators occluded means there is definitely an obstacle in common parlance in the first year i think there are most of our first most of your first year students there is an obstruction or in the way there is an obstruction in the circulation so we are advising arterial and venous to see whether there is an occlusion occlusion means a block in the artery or the vein so how it develops it develops due to many factors 
one the uh, I mean all people don't develop that one the wall mechanism of the uh, great saphenous vein and the short saphenous vein has uh, got impaired secondly the peripheral heart is not functioning all the it may be due to occupational factors also vihara vihara is as important as an avahara and vihara as uh, are as important as an avashada for an ayurvedic practitioner we have to ask the occupation history suppose the patient was uh, in a job suppose he was a policeman or he was in the fire force or he was in the defense he must have spent a lot of time serving the country by standing so we have to consider we have to ask him what suppose you know in the current era sales people who are working as salesmen sales boys and sales girls uh, those guys you know and the, the uh, uh, girls it's a matter of pity that they have to stand in the shop for 10 or 11 hours most of the good textile shops and jewelries they don't provide stools for the salesman or the saleswoman to sit down so you have to take into consideration the occupation their gestation history so i'm not deviating from the topic so these can all in pathologies can also cause marma vikata so here it is a mamsa marma it's a kalandra pranahara marma a deep injury to the calf muscle which injured the deeply located anterior tibial and peroneal arteries this is for the first, i mean i uh, when i asked dr vishnu he told that uh, the participants mainly from the first year but first i need to convey the concept what is because we are teachers of anatomy and the, uh, as an anatomist we are only first bothered about the structures then only we have to go to the other aspect but definitely we are teaching anatomy for a individual to treat a patient in a good way that is why we are adding all these concepts along with this so an injury to solely some sort of impair the function so the muscle is also known as peripheral artery small function my little varicosity of veins located in the lower limb similarly in the upper limb there is bahvi now there is another question the bahvi is just a homologous thing so is does this happen in the upper limb upper limb the condition is different you know when i i was just taking the class almost at least 20 or 30 times i have uh, what you call lifted my arm so naturally the venous blood ha- will uh, go back okay because i am definitely working against the gravity but in the uh, when it comes to the upper limb you know you have to consider it structurally only okay then the janu marma the same thing i told you jango orvi santane janu tatra gajjada I have told the concept. It's a shaka marma, sandhi marma. It is a vaigalya kara marma. Pramana is triangular. You need to study all the ligaments of uh, janu sandhi. There is a mnemonic you want to study the structures in the uh, what you call janu sandhi. Uh, you need to go through that uh, ligaments and all because that is very important clinically. Okay. Suppose a person is coming with you to you with an MRI. In the current era, people Google it out. They do the investigations themselves. So half. for work is done and then come to with the result so that time we need to know whether this uh, is ligament tear can be managed with our ayurveda bandaging or you need to refer that person to a, a surgeon refer referring a patient is definitely uh, a, a responsibility you you are not letting yourself die by referring a patient to a modern medicine or to a surgeon see you will only know that when you have treat uh, 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 diagnosed a patient in a wrong way and suppose that disease has worsened you know the our profession is like that 100 cases you save and one case it goes wrong that one case will uh, spoil our entire career so if it is not easy to manage the tire weather there is nothing to feel bad referring to a, uh, especially to a modern medicine is one among your responsibilities so to understand that the marma bigada you need to study especially the sandhi marma you need to study all the joints which your teachers will teach you in the first year okay and even if you have forgotten it sciences develop by leaps and bounds you just go to youtube you have hundred of videos animated video showing you the joints of knee uh, ligaments and uh, the structures and teaching you about the movement management of all these injuries okay and next homologous that is the fourth para marma now kurpara kurpara ke kuni kuni like similar to manibanda kundaga one word has been uh, described it has been used by susurda to describe the kurpara marma bigada and he has told that he has told kuhuni idi loge some people still call it as kuhuni and kuni has been explained as sangujida bahumadhi as explained as sangujida uh, uh, bah, uh, bahumadhi okay so sangujita bahumadhya means what this bahumadhya this bahu will be this prabahu prabani prahasta 
So Surya is considered Bahu as the entire upper limb. But if you take the list of 56 Pratyangas mentioned by Charaga in Dogabhishadjadi Vimana, uh, I think it's in the Dogabhishadjadi Vimana or the sixth chapter, I don't know exactly, but it's a Charaga Sharira. That Pratyanga, he has told Prabahu, Prapani, Prahasta for the arm, forearm, and hand. So here Bahu means something the Bahu Madhya. Bahu is upper. So it will be flexed. Because you will not be able to uh, half plus or semi flex you. The patient will not be, or the person will not be able to extend and flex his elbow. Okay, so it's a Shaka Marma, Sandhi Marma. Similar is the case of Purpara Marma. And this is number of cases you are getting in the current arena. Structures involve the formation of elbow joint, that is golfer's elbow, tennis elbow. And definitely after the Amavasta, if the patient is having, if you clear the patient of the Amavasta, if you are sure that the patient is not having an amavasta, if the pain is still persisting over the specific region, the best available treatment, one of the Vajrayudas for Ayurvedic general practice is Agni Garma. Even for carpal tunnel syndrome and for this thing also. And definitely when a patient comes to, especially if a female comes to with a uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, carpal tunnel syndrome is what? It's the entrapment of median nerve uh, in the carpal tunnel. Okay. If it comes to you with a carpal tunnel syndrome or a what you call a tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, definitely you have to take into consideration their thyroid profile and uric acid. So certain correlations we can find when we have, a, uh, I am not an uh, extensive Ayurvedic practitioner, but still I see a few cases in my uh, clinic in the weekends. So this what I have noticed and I have uh, seen many senior orthopedic practitioners advising that in their Ayurvedic orthopedic practitioners, especially a patient is coming to you with a carpal tunnel syndrome or pain in the uh, Minimanda region or the foot, but definitely you have to take their uh, what you call the thyroid profile and also see their blood urea and uric acid. Often that is all, uh, often associated with this thing also. Okay. And, uh, next is the Ani Marma. That is located three angular about the Janu is the Ani Marma. So in the arm, it is located three angular about the foot parma. Janu na Urdham Ubeda, triangular mani, tatra, shofa bivurdi, stab the sakidaja. It is a Shaga Marma, it is a Snayu Marma, Vaigalyagara Marma, and there are four Ani Marma. There is no doubt in that. This definitely refers to the tendon of the quadriceps in the lower limb. Suppose a cut or a hit occurs. Okay. You have to go and that biceps bracket tear is more common compared to the uh, what you call quadriceps muscle tear. You will see that when you undergo the dissection. The tendon of quadriceps is a very strong, sturdy tendon. Whereas the tendon of biceps, you know, it's not so strong. It can be easily injured in uh, what you call during sports. The, you know, uh, the some people, you know, as a part uh, to remain fit, uh, they might have not have done any exercise or stretching for the past five or ten years, and their friend will tell, of course, we will start playing badminton to remain fit. So uh, just they will do stretching exercise for two days. And they will uh, go, go to play badminton. This is one of the common, <laughs> what you call, reasons of the biceps uh, tendon there. And another thing which we have noticed is that, by you know, in badminton is a game that uh, in which the upper limb is used. But you know, the more injuries for badminton players, or especially for the not for the sports person, for the common layman who is playing badminton, happens to the knee injury because the reflex has to be so fast. So these are something, uh, certain factors which you notice if in a close manner, you can find all those things. So that is the Ani Marma Pikata. So here, this, uh, what you call, why it is called Ani still, uh, uh, what you call, uh, um, uh, the etymology behind the word Ani, maybe it binds these tendons, this important muscle, sorry, it binds this important muscle. So an uh, important tendon is involved. That's why the possible reason it's called as an Ani. And then comes Urvi Marma, Uru, Uru Bangam, that's a very famous Sanskrit play, Uru Pradeshe, Uru Stamba. So, Uru Madhye Urvi, Tatra Shoni Rekshaya, Sakti Sosha, is located in the middle of Uru, is the Urvi Marma. And again, here it is not Shoni Rava, they are told Shoni Rekshaya. And here we have to consider this Shoni Rekshaya both in the physical aspect and also in the pathology aspect. Because one of the most common causes in road traffic accident is that 
suppose a scooter or a bike or a car it uh, what you call uh, goes over the thigh of the person you know how the death occurs the death is uh, occurring not uh, uh, just because of uh, uh, the fracture it is occurring because the femoral artery is ruptured here uh, we uh, one thing is that dhamani has not been considered as a marma vastu by susruta but it is been considered as a marma vastu by vagbada vagbada has classified the sixth marma vastu that is ashtangradegara has classified that's dhamani and he has classified guda abastamba vidura and sringadaka anavadi shay one guda and uh, two abastamba uh, two vidura and the uh, uh, four sringadaka is uh, um, uh, dhamani marma and vagbada is the only person who has given the samanya marma vidya lakshana for according to the marma vastu so when it comes to the uh, dhamani marma you know uh, he has told raktam sa shabda fenoshnam dhamanistam vichetasa so raktam sa shabda fena ushnam it doesn't mean that once you prick an artery there will be a huge burst like like a tire is being burst that's not that is not the concept he is telling that big, there will be raktam sa shabda fena ushnam with froth because there will be a heavy gush of blood so to mention that gush he has used the word shabda raktam sa shabda fena ushnam damani stam vichetasa so if a damani marma is injured vichetasa instantly the death will occur so this is one of the possible samhita explanations why damani has been classified as an artery though you read the damani vyagarnam you have to consider damani as a neurovascular network only not only the <coughs> artery but in when it comes to susura samhita here he has classified arteries under the word sira only he has not classified madhavani uh, so here the chonadakshaya means you have to consider it as an injury to the femoral artery or any injury that or any sepsis in the region of thigh that leads to the hemodynamics impairment of the hemodynamics or the hemopolysis okay it's a vaigalyagara marma uh so that shakti soshe and it is uh, he has not classified that as a it is a matter of interest now that he has not classified that as a sabhya pranahara or kalantra pranahara by so again that again justifies i mean that again negates the possibility of correlating this to the uh, femoral uh, artery also to the femoral uh, artery in the lower limb well you have you can consider that the femoral when you, when you undergo the dissection you see femoral artery is not an easily accessible structure because in the thigh there is a skin there is a however lean the person is there is a heavy so a coat of superficial fascia then we have the deep fascia it is well uh, what you call protected in the femoral triangle well protected in the adductor canal so uh, it is not a superficial structure you cannot tell directly it is a femoral artery so uh, we should consider the femoral artery when you treat a injury in the urvi region that is the concept which i have to convey to you because shown the kshaya shakti shosho that is the, okay and similarly in the upper limb there is a brachial brachial artery is more superficial i think compared to the uh, what you call femoral because a uh, rupture or any uh, fracture to the lower uh, what you call uh, the uh, lo uh, lower and uh, lo uh, lower end of the shaft of the uh, humerus can easily rupture the brachial artery okay so here also you have to consider that you have to take into consideration the brachial artery that's all okay then comes the lohi the walkman's ischemic contracture that you will learn in the shalya tantra final finally walkman's ischemic contracture is there that is a highly uh, that is a very uh, emergency condition you need to do the surgery as soon as possible so that is true what susra has told then comes lohi daksha I think the Amarya Kosha or Sabda Kalpa Dharma in which text I don't know, but I'll clarify that tomorrow. I think Lohitaksha is mentioned as a snake. That is one of the synonyms, Lohitaksha. And Lohitaksha is one of the synonyms of Lord Shiva in Hindu mythology, and definitely you cannot correlate that. That is not the rationale behind that. Still, Urvya Urumadhe Vankshana Samde Urvya Urdhom Ado. Urvya Urdhom Ado Vankshana Samde Urumule Lohita. That's how you have to read, read it. Urvya Urdhom. Above the urvi and ado vankshana sandhi. Vankshana sandhi uh, is a point where the trunk joins the body. Uh, sorry, trunk joins the thigh. 
uh, in sandhi sharira many people consider functional sandhi as a hip joint hip joint actually when you correlate to modern anatomy it is a region where the head of the femur joins as a tabula but here the region of vanshana actually is the region where the trunk joins the thigh okay uru mool lohidaksha uru moole lohidaksha that is the easiest way to remember the location of that is the root of thigh is the lohidaksha uru moole lohidaksha even if you don't remember the other part which is a tough slog at all remember let's like just take the prashta marma uru moole lohidaksha lohidaksha yana maranam paksha kodava so it is located above the urvi and below the vamshana and there are two marmas there they have told uh, what to call pakshagada here pakshagada what is the definition of pakshagada in ayurveda when you read the vadavyadi nidana you tell hatvegam mahardaha paksham dakshinam vama mevaja karodi chesta vidam rujam vak stambha mevaja so any uh, uh, what you call impairment of the movement can be correlated uh, as pakshagada okay uh, uh so in this condition you can uh, it is a shaka marma it's a sila marma vaikalyakara marma and it's uh, pra, uh, pramana is ardangula there are four lohi lohi daksha marma and the contents of the femoral triangle any uh, pathology that is affecting the uh, what to call uru uh, moola uh, even vruddhi uh, was vruddhi uh, has been mentioned in the chills of stana and the description of vritti uh, often it matches with the femoral hernia and one thing we should understand that femoral hernia is a condition where the often we have found that the patient is very busy or the patient is uh, really afraid to go for a surgery there are some people like that they don't want to go for a surgery and they will continue to persist for a long time with this femoral hernia so this is a the uh, prevalence of hernia is very high in the world population to 10 percent i think the prevalence is there so you can also consider that on the, any injury to the urumula can also be considered uh, and here the axillary artery with the median of course you have a fall on outstretched hand and this is i think the uru urvi uh, lohidaksha is definitely related to the warfare or to the emergency management because you have a fall on outstretched hand suppose you are uh, what you call Uh, uh neck of the uh, uh humerus is fractured the axillary nerve can easily get injured if uh, the shoulder joint is dislocated definitely the uh, what you call the any uh, uh, what you call branch of the uh, brachial plexus can get injured so you often you see the lie of the axillary artery and the median nerve see the two roots of the median nerve they actually lie on the uh, what you call Uh, uh, two roots of the median nerve lie on the axillary artery like this in a V shape. So these structures are very close to each other. So that's why it justifies the classification. I mean the word pakshagada. Okay. Uru mule lohidaksha. Remember like that. Then comes vitapa marma. Vankshana vishne or antare vitapam tapra shantyam alpa shukrata vapavati. See when you analyze the marma, you have to widen that spectrum set of marma. Shantyam alpa shukrata. So located between the vankshana and vrishana is told. Here it is very important to note, note that he has not used the word vidya or anything like that. He has just told tatra shantyam alpa shukrata bhavavati. So it is located between vankshana and vrishana. It is a shaga marma, snayu marma, and you can easily correlate uh, this marma to uh, the concept of uh, infertility and sterility. Where again you have to take the concept of bihara. See, uh, uh, you have to ask the person whether he uses the motorbike or he drives a car for a long distance. You have to ask his occupation history, whether he is working in a very humid or uh, dry or hot area. All this this can easily be uh, correlated to pathology, and definitely it is uh, related to the contents of the spermatic cord. Definitely with the spermatogenesis because shanti malpa shukta is definitely related to the spermatogenesis with the mamma malika. Now comes the kakshadara marma that is in the upper arm that is homologous to the beta bar. In the upper limb there is a kakshadara pakshada. I told there are two marmas that is uru mule that is lohi daksha and the kakshadara and only pakshada that is told. So it can cause any injury to that uh, root of that. Uh, Uh, upper limb that is the axilla kaksha means the axilla the region of axilla can cause uh, an impairment uh, uh, because of the injury to the 
uh, what you call um, brachial plexus. So it's a shaka marma. It is again classified as a snayu marma. Here they is considered as a snayu marma because you know, as you all know, even you are able to access or you are able to see the contents of the axilla only when you what you call abduct the arm at 90 degree. While even the cadaver only dissecting, like this you cannot approach the axilla. Or in a uh, what you call just uh, 45 degree abduction you cannot. Only when you go when you what you call abduct the uh, arm at uh, uh, 40 uh, 90 degree you are able to access the axilla because there is a protection of the deltoid there is a protection of that uh, what you call uh, biceps muscle there is a uh, protection of the what you call uh, uh, so shoulder joint that shoulder griddle is actually protecting that so this has been classified as a bicolor marma by taking into consideration the snayu uh, snayus which are uh, protecting the uh, what you call the now, this is probably the location of Kakshadra. There's no doubt. No? Kakshadra means the Kaksha. That is the region of axilla. It can also be the inner part of axilla also. Okay. And uh, there's a little bit of disturbance. And now, here comes the concluding slide. There is a marma in the current era. So, here, this is a statement from the Sankhya Shariram chapter. Mamsa Siras Nayu Asti, Jalani Pratagan Chatuadi, Tani Banibanda Gulfa Samsardani, Paraspara Nibandani, Paraspara Gavakshidani Jedi, Yer Gavakshida Midam Shari. So, while explaining the Jala, he has told that the Mamsa Siras Nayu Asti Jalani, there is a Jala of Mamsa Siras Nayu and Asti, Pratagan Chatu. Tani Bani Banda Gulpa Samsudani. This is definitely dependent or it is related to Mani Banda and Gulpa. Paraspara Nibadani, Paraspara Gavakshidani Shedi, Yer Gavakshidamidam Shedi. That is, the human body is entangled, entwined with, with each other. So, this is a statement that has been classified in the, the modern era by a concept called anatomy. That has been proposed by a person called Thomas Mines. So here, what they are telling is that we, if we are treating a patient for a low backache, we are just giving an example. So the patient is coming to you with your X-ray, and you find that there is a spondylolisthesis. The patient, you are also submitting the patient to an MRI of that spine. You find that there is a degeneration of the lumbar disc. So. He has been taking a painkillers for quite a long time now. He is not able to sustain with that. So he has come to an Ayurvedic consultation. You submit that patient to Panchakarma, you submit him to Vasti, to Kadi Vasti, the uh, Patra Kodala Sveda, or Snehapana, Vidyana, whatever it is, Snehapana, Vidyana, according to your condition. Now, post the treatment, you are again taking an MRI or the X ray. Do you think that that uh, structure has uh, that damaged structure has been repaired or it has gone back to the extent position the process of protrusion of the L4 L5 disc? Nothing will happen if you go for a post and pre and post study. The status of the structures will be seen. And what the currently all people, all orthopedicians are telling is that if you take an MRI of the lumbosacral spine of uh, hundred people, sixty percentage will be having some pathology. But still, with our Ayurvedic treatment, we are able to relieve the pain, uh, pain and provide him uh, 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 relief for one or two years. So, actually, what is happening there? So, now the modern medicine has come up with a concept that there is a facial system that is actually controlling the movement and the pain. Similar is the case with any joint, this thing, or what, even in the case of osteoporosis. And also in the case of uh, uh, bamboo spine or the cervical vertebra degeneration, you can never repair the structure or take it back to the original position. Okay, so here, the what he has said, there is nothing called a single muscle here. A person is having his uh, uh, left, uh, what you call, humerus fracture. Will he be able to, his all other muscles are intact. Will he be able to cut a wood using his one hand? Definitely, he will be not able to do that. So why a person having a migraine headache is not able to do anything? Definition of migraine goes, 
any physical activity and uh, light will definitely uh, what you call uh, cause discomfort and definitely it will aggravate the pain so there is as so sorry, the, the, here is where the holistic concept of ayurveda is getting proved so this is a book that is been published that is available online so here he has kind of, there is a facial system that show uh, that what you call leading to a source of study facial network that is present in the whole human body and this is these are the myofacial meridians which he has mentioned in the body just like the trains why it is called anatomy trains is that there is a myofacial meridian now with the advance of this advancement of this concept and with the uh, pro, with this concept there is a new therapy that has come that has been practiced by a uh, I mean, there has been practiced by a few uh, physiotherapists that's called the myofacial release here suppose the person is having a pain in the neck region when he gets it so he has now marked some meridians you should be able to understand these meridians and you should be able to move your fingers along this meridian and this pain in the neck might be caused due to a trigger point in the lumbar region see the fourth picture see just uh, this is just a concept i'm not uh, go, uh, giving a specific explanation i'm just explaining a concept so see so the people who practice mfr they grow superficially uh, slowly slowly they deepen they move their fingers and suppose by the reach the lumbar region here there will be pain so that is called a trigger point so with the application of pressure they will be able to provide relief in this trigger point trigger points are points where the pain aggravates while applying pressure now this mfr and stretching is very important now they don't say uh, they don't say you do exercise you stretch so the stretch manual is there that is available online so this myofascial release if it is done with an oil especially our oil like danvantaram tapas apple kaila mudu kondu is said to have a better result and moreover this is very uh, useful the concept of marma should come into play in our side. person is a software engineer definitely you have to go for his ergonomics he is having a, a pain in the neck he is having a low back pain the pain is radiating to his wrist and uh, shoulders definitely you have to consider the uh, trigatika marma you have to consider the kakshadana marma you have to consider the amsa marma amsa falaka marma it can be applied in repetitive strain injury or whether it can provide you the best relief and you have to convince the patient that everything in the world has a service the mobile phone smartphone which you are using runs for 3 or 4 years you change the phone to the other code is damaged or you repair it this is there for your car service is there for your motor motor motorcycle service is there for your air conditioner service is there for a refrigerator human sharir is also like that because here the service is what the equilibrium of the dosha is lost equilibrium is not equity my a state of equilibrium of dosha is definitely different from yours so rsi in post traumatic management especially in the case of stroke and uh, suppose the patient has uh, have had a severe motor vehicle accident he has come uh, he has had a head injury so he has come back from the critical phase concept of marma can be applied management of fractures there are very few uh, people who do i come from the uh, town of thrissur which is an ayurvedic hub thrissur has a number of it's a big herbal market there are a number of uh, gmp manufacturing units actually thrissur is the district that has a maximum number of ayurvedic gmp companies in india maximum number of uh, outlets hospitals and all, but there are very few practitioners who manage fractures in thrissur so uh, similar is the case of mfr so that is my take home message because you are studying or you are teaching a subject for the especially medical science for the benefit of the mankind so approach marma in a holistic way rather than viewing marma like this just like shown in the kshaya in the textbook it is told yeah that to locker due to hemorrhage you will get 5 out of 5 for your uh, university exam but to become a good practitioner and to do good to the society you need to approach marma in a holistic way and i i i, I have not uh, what to call it, taken a class on marma i have just facilitated the concept of marma into you 
Sloka you can get anywhere, even the software, the Sloka is there. So I have, I have just done the concept of facilitator. If you feel that some of my concept which I have uh, uh, shared with you is wrong, uh, please uh, what you call, forgive me or just please let me know. And definitely you should interact with your teachers because our science is like that is proactive. It is definitely progressive. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for taking your time to prepare for such an extraordinary enlightening session, which is incredibly informative. Now, shall we go ahead to the question and answer session, sir? I request the participants to post their questions in the chat box. I'm going to, have to ask my mobile number. I just posted it. And one of the questions is, uh, it's a simple treatment for ligament tear. That is why I'm telling. See, I'm not an ex, ex, ex I very clearly give it, give it disclosure. I'm not an exact expert in managing the ligament tear. But uh, the ligament tear, the best thing is to bandage it more. It is the best thing that you can do. And bandaging, you should learn from your uh, from a Shalya expert. Okay. Or from a person who is being, there is no hardcore rule that only Shalya, Shalya PGs can do a bandage. Bandaging, you need to study from a good bandaging expert. Okay. And sports medicine courses are now available that are very good. They, you don't need to go for your post graduation. After your BMS, you can do the sports medicine courses and uh, you can definitely uh, excel in bandaging and all those things. There is a, 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 one question was how to use Marma for treatment purpose. That is a slide which is shown here in RSIs, in post-traumatic injuries. And this concept of uh, this thing, Varma, you know, I just, uh, I've gone through the notes of uh, the people who have attended that course. I'm yet to attend that course. I think that in the Shipra Marma region, uh, pressure is being applied or massage is given for migraine. Similarly, uh, they have in Tamil Varma, they have correlated, they have correlated Marma to uh, energy points that you need to integrate and you need to apply to the patients and see how it is right, how right it is, because there is no right and wrong in Ayurveda, because it, it definitely depends on the patient. Okay. Thank you, sir. I request the delegates to post your questions in the chat box. And I'll share that uh, send that presentation to the team. I think they will share it with the participants. So there is a question, sir. Sir, what are the precautions I have to take while doing uh, Shira Shira for? Sira Vaithya for varicose veins, sir. I have done it only five or ten times individually, independently, to be very frank. So the precaution which I take is that definitely we have to uh, take the uh, BTCT, bleeding time and clotting time and the hemoglobin of the patient. Okay. And you can see how you have to see the bleeding time and clotting time. And the day prior to the Sira Vaitha, uh, you have to ask the patient to uh, take uh, uh, light uh, food. And that is preferably if he is a South Indian, ask him to take some kanji. And if he's from the northern part of India, ask him to take some kichiri. And the prior, uh, the day prior to the Sira Veda, for night, he should take the uh, what you call rice, a little bit of rice mi mixed with uh, uh, shira and uh, sugar. If he's a diabetic patient, no need to add sugar. He has to take the shira yavag. In Malayalam, we tell pal kanji. A little bit of uh, what you call rice and a uh, better quantity of shira. That is told in the Siddha Vedya Vidhi, Palkani. And this, these are the pre uh, precautions which you need to take. And always uh, perform Siddha Vedha by uh, blinding the patient. Patient will tell, I am uh, confident, I have no fear. But you, it is better to what you call apply a tonic to over his eye, uh, better to blind the patient by doing the Siddha Veda. I would always advise. And always you should counsel the patient before the Siddha Veda. And you should have all uh, what you call uh, what you call necessary arrangements in your uh, 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 in, in your clinic. It can be easily done in the clinic, provided there should be space, there should be a dish to collect them, uh, what you call the Dushta Rekta. The needle is there. You need to, uh, you, you should have it, uh, what you call, close to apply the tourniquet. And you should also have the, uh, what you call, guts to manage if the patient faints. Okay. So I think it is better to avoid the eye contact of the patient with the sera that is to be punctured. Okay. 
thank you sir so there is another question sir so could you please give an explanation for the relation between assessment of moses sign in the case of dvd dvt and indrabasti marma sir no i cannot uh, exactly i don't know i was just uh, uh, what to call uh, correlating that uh, dvt with that uh, doppler study only i have no experience in managing that because indrabasti marma what i am telling is that it, uh, see that is a theoretical concept suppose the person is coming to you with this what you call with the uh, discoloration you have suspecting a dvt it is better to go for a doppler study that is a gold standard test rather than any sense it's a gold standard test so there you have to take that take into consideration the history of that uh, what you want the history of the patient thank you sir so the next question is is jeloga effective for varicose vein sir yes thank you sir It, it, but it is the thing is that you know in gustal in the case of varicose vein if it is highly engorged if it is highly engorged it is better to take a butterfly needle and puncture that vein jalauka you know it will take a lot of jalauka is more there is, there is a sloka is there no it is better used in practically it is more used in eczema and dermatitis conditions like that in case of siragrandin especially in varicose veins the, be, the best thing is use a needle to puncture so that there is an immediate uh, flow of the gustal tract and the patient will feel relieved immediately okay jalauka uh, depends you can experiment if you want because jalauka you know jalauka they have told it is it can be used for bhala vridha deeru raja everything it is a safe method because you you you, you feel very less pain okay no any specific sira means you know there, though there are 98 avidya siras that have been mentioned in sutra samhita that you have to do with your logic see in the case of sira veda the sira that is engorged you need to puncture that there is no doubt in that and obviously you have to take if it is there is a what if called uh, varicose ulcer definitely you should not go for sira veda at that point thank you so much sir So there are no more questions in the chat box, sir. Shall we continue Hello? the discussion? Session, Hello. Sir? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. We can speak, ma'am. Question, madam. Yeah. Uh, sure, ma'am. Thank ma you so much for the Go informative ahead, session, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I just had one patient uh, having history of fall couple of times on her back, and her age is fifty one now. Ah, uh, she got uh, this MRI done, and her D eleven thoracic eleven vertebra. uh should smorous nude mm. so do you think we have to think about any um, bus uh, marma uh, role uh, marma bigata role in having pain because she has lot of pain in the back region see that is why what i am telling is that you know, marma is in such condition when you have a clear cut diagnosis see in the, these conditions it's better to look into the doshas because marma you know i was just correlating the concept of indrapasti with the marma that's all when you have a clear cut diagnosis is better to go with the principles that have been mentioned in the do doshic management so here the same question was asked whether jalauga you can use for sira veda as well. see i am not an i frankly i gave a disclosure i am not a full fledged practitioner and i have done only five or 10 cases of sira veda independently usually i have seen number of cases being done and uh, uh, usually we don't advise uh, jaloga so when it comes to the concept of jaloga it is better to use the concept that is being mentioned by in the uh, doshi concept so smaller or uh, we'll see you have better uh, what are the conditions you having severe pain better to go for the roga parisha rogi parisha the doshi status and then administer that is better okay sir thank you so much thank you sir so there is a one there is one more question in the chat box sir sir as in case of varicose ulcer what can we do for that case sir see actually it is you to you know the chinsa sutra sira grandi it is to tell me sira grando nave peyam tailam sahajaram tada ubanaha anlahare vastir karma sira vyada 
So that is the treatment method. So this is one of the very few vyadis where Nava and Purana has been told. Just like Nava Jora, Purana Jora. Siryagrando Nava Payam. So in Nava means it is not a, a case of ulceration. So Nava Payam, Thailam Sajaram Tada. You can uh, uh, give Sajara as an external application and internally also. Avarthi of Sajara. That is available as officer capsule. Ubanaha Anila Hare, Vastir Karma Siryavada. In the case of varicose veins, initial case of Siryagrandi, you can give Ubanaha also. Ubanaha, Anila Hare, that is all Anila Hare procedures. Uh, uh, and they have also mentioned Siryavada. But in the case of varicose ulcer, it is better to treat it as a Bruno. Better to go for uh, what you call Jatyadi application. And uh, depending on the condition in Kerala, we, have, uh, you, we usually manage it to Google Kitan Kashaya or Tiktakan Kashaya. And Kaisora Guguru, it is better to go for the Varanachik sound once it is the varicose ulcer. An external application you can use Karanja Taila depending on your uh, what you call your uh, what you call the, uh, experience. Uh, usually in Kerala, we uh, what you call we give Jatyadi external application is done. Even in some cases, the non healing ulcer, I have even seen Taila Dhara is also being done. But Taila is not good when you have an ulceration. It is better to go for a, a labana. And internally, I would advise uh, Bhuguli Tiktaka and Maha Tiktaka and, or Maha Manjistadi Kashaya along with Kaiswaru Bhuguli. That too, depending on the condition. Whether it is spike tiga or whether, it is, uh, whether there is a high level of Srava is there. And if it is diabetic, you have to take into consideration that diabetes also. Thank you, sir. And uh, do, do not go for therapies like Udvartana in the case of varicose ulcer. Udvartana and any uh, Ushna procedure will definitely activate that. Thank you, sir. So there are no more questions in the chat box, sir. Shall we conclude the question and answer session, sir? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for patiently answering all the questions. Now, we will go ahead to the vote of time. Now, I invite Dr. Sarika, a.k.a. Associate Professor, Department of Shalya Tantra, Ayurveda College Coimbatore, to deliver the vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. It is my privilege to extend vote of thanks for today's session. I would like to express my sincere thanks to Dr. Vijaynath sir for sharing his valuable experience on applied aspects of MAMA. I'm sure that all participants are immensely benefited by being here. Your understanding, your depth of knowledge, and your ability to present the subject in such an interesting way produced one of the memorable evening for all of us, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And lastly, I extend my gratitude to all my delegates. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you one and all. Thank you, ma'am. Work for cause, not for applause. Live your life to express, not to impress. Thank you all for your patient listening and the valuable time spent. See you all in the next session. To know more about our updates, please do stay connected with the social media platform. That's all for today's most interesting session with lots of new information for us to close our eyes with thought-provoking knowledge. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Okay, one second. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir.